friends and welcome back and welcome to a fresh tepid takes. Tepid takes is what I call my series on talking about new beauty releases, chatting about things that are coming out on trend mood because well I have an encyclopedic stash. I collect makeup in order to compare things, swatching them for color theory reasons and formula reasons and things like that. I am not a makeup hobbyist I guess is what I'm saying and so it's not about collecting things for my own personal use as much as it is for the collective, right? So if you have been in search of a channel that has the giant heaving stash just for the purposes of being able to compare these things so that you can make better informed decisions in your future beauty purchases, then consider subscribing while you are here. But we are going to start with Trend Mood, going in reverse chronological order. I mean, honestly, completely blind. I'm going in cold on this one. <laughs> I haven't looked at all. And we're going to talk about the new beauty releases coming out and whether I think that they deserve a spot on my channel. So let's go ahead and jump in. Special thanks to Trend Mood for existing as always. Okay, so the first thing here I see is the new Fall Collection 2023 from Tom Ford. I guess that the last thing that we saw from Tom Ford was that very golden summery thing, so I guess this makes sense. I don't know why I thought that we were swimming in Tom Ford releases, but I guess not. I guess that's just my imagination. There are a lot of quads. So this one, is pink. It's pink. I'm sorry, I'm just not that excited about pink right now. I am fully in my latte makeup bag right now. I have been so into the new Phytosurgeons bronzers. They're so good. <laughs> and they make me feel so just like pretty and sun-kissed and healthy looking that I'm just like, anytime something goes kind of a little too cool toned, I'm very like, oh no, no, back to bronze. Give me all the bronze, you know? But very typical of his palettes, I find that this is, again, it's like they're all, with the exception of that pale one up in the corner, they're all kind of in the same color value. They're all in the same medium, in this case, color value, which makes a quad kind of hard to use, in my opinion, because it's like, okay, well, how many looks can I really get out of it? Yeah, those swatches are really underwhelming. And then the other one is like literally exactly the same, except it's got a pink shimmer in it. I, oh my God, wait! <laughs> so long that I literally forgot about it. <laughs> Did you just see my whole mood change? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I want that clear rose lip oil from Tom Ford so bad just because I love a clear anything on my lips. And it's Tom Ford and so the packaging is so bougie. I bet it's gonna be so lovely. And even if it's not, it'll be exciting to talk about how disappointing it is for the crazy price tag that I paid for it. But wow, the contrast of that versus how underwhelmed I am by his quads. I don't love his quads. I don't love his eyeshadow formula anyway. I gave all of mine away to Hannah and Simbri. They're very appreciative. They use them a lot. So I'm glad they went to good homes. But also why, is I'm just kind of finishing a thought. I have a tab open in my brain. Why are we still in including the little, like, I, I get the spongy applicator, but that little brush, who's using that? Raise your hand in the comments, let me know. If you're using that, ex explique me, por favor. It, I'm sorry, like, it's just, it's very silly at this point, those little tiny applicateurs. But yeah, hoo hoo, hoo 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 hoo, oh, the rose lip oil is mine, and why did no one tag me in this? Shortly after filming, someone did. Thank you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I do not care about Sol de Janeiro. Why didn't I say I do not care, oh, about Sol de Janeiro? Why didn't I say that? I'm sorry. I do not care about anything that they do. Their fragrances offend me. They are coming out with new fragrances. I will entertain them in person if I happen to be in a Sephora, but I've smelled some of the new ones and I don't like them at all. They give me an instant headache right behind my eyeballs. Goodness, what is this? Available now, collab Disney 100 with Charlotte Tilbury. This looks like it's just a packaging difference. That is, and I don't want to offend anyone, but that is really like, putting the cherry on top of the ugly Sunday that Charlotte Tilbury's packaging has been going towards lately. That is so offensive. I'm not gonna go any further than saying that because I, again, I don't wanna offend anyone's taste, but like Charlotte Tilbury prices her stuff so luxuriously and the packaging is just, it just, the, I don't get luxury from it. And this little pouch with Tinkerbell bedazzled on it, it hurts me. <laughs> It's just such poor taste. And I love Tinkerbell. I love Tinkerbell, okay? Peter Pan is one of my 
favorite Disney movies, but like, nor. Now, are these Beauty Light ones pink gold spotlight? I don't think that they're new. The colors in any persuasion, and they've gone from $40 each to $42 each, and I love that they're like, $42 each, the trio for $126. As I like to say in these cases, that's not a deal, that's just math. I will not be buying those. I already have a lot of the light ones. I have really fallen into the trend of just wanting to know, and I'll tell you, you know, they're okay. And it's why all these brands keep duping them and everything, but <sighs> I, there's just not that much room in my routine for anything that's like that particularly, specifically shimmery glowy. I love her matte ones. The blush ones, they're so good. They're so good. But this is just, this is not for me. And again, the packaging is heinous. That's how I feel about Kylie. Okay, so available now, link in bio, new shades of the Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Blush from Fenty. I feel like I was one of the only people who liked this blush when it came out, and I bought four shades in it. I was very impressed by it. It was when we were just starting out as like a beauty culture on YouTube and talking about an all cream face of makeup. We're getting really stoked on cream blushes and it was right on the heels, I feel like, of the first wave of popularity of the Tower 28 blushes and so everyone was very offended by how expensive these were for what you got. $24. I don't know how much is in them but like I've never panned one. I think that they're a perfectly good price. Let me see the new shades. So these look extraordinarily beautiful. Like, I would wear all of them. They're so pretty. I mean, I have Rosé Latte already, Cool Berry, Summertime Wine, maybe those are the, th no, and then I also had Drama Class. Did they get rid of Drama Class? Drama Class is like purple. That's wild that they didn't swatch it on here unless Drama Class is literally gone. But I think that Peach Face and Big Melons look like me. Those look really nice. I don't know if I'm gonna buy them because I already, know, like I buy things for review. This is not something that I personally, as you know, a makeup owner, makeup user, I feel like is missing from my collection. And I can tell you right now, I think that it's a perfectly good formula. It's whether or not these shades grip me in person as something that I feel like is, is something that is worth comparing to the rest of my collection or is, you know, remarkably different from something else. But I need to swatch those in the store because I don't even know where to start, but they're really pretty and I do like that formula. Okay, so Prada has just revealed their makeup line. Finally dropping their first makeup and skincare launch, eyeshadow palettes. Each one includes three shades with different finishes. Colors were inspired by Prada prints, which I don't think is a particularly good way to go in terms of wearable makeup because I have looked at all of these and spoiler, I bought them. <laughs> I only bought one of the eyeshadow palettes, but I did buy the foundation and one of the lipsticks. It's gonna be a look, okay? Like, it's gonna be a look. There's no getting away from it being a look. That's the hang up that I had about the eyeshadow trios is that like, you have an okay shade, an okay shade, and then just like an ah shade. There's like a green or like a blue or like a red, you know? And I bought the red one. I don't know why. I was just like, okay, whatever. Maybe I can use it as a blush, but we will see together I ordered it off of Harrods so it cost $30 to ship it to me because I wanted it okay <laughs> I am such a simp for a luxury beauty release and I want to know if Prada Beauty is good so I did buy these but yes 13 matte uh, lipsticks in two different finishes I bought the soft matte and I think I got it in like a wild orange kind of color I'm gonna be trying to channel Michelle Wong although no one wears an orange lip like Michelle Wong I'm not I'm not even close but we're gonna give it a shot. The Prada Reveal Foundation, this is what kind of like turned the corner for me because all of these luxury brands, they love to put out a luxury foundation and they're like, we've got money bags, let's have 60 shades or whatever. And then they're like, it's matte. And I'm like, what year is it? No one wants a matte foundation from you. Maybe they do, I don't know, but like, why are they all matte? Okay, it doesn't say it on here, but when I bought it, it says that it was like a, a not even natural, I think it was like a radiant finish, like medium coverage. And I was like, yes, Prada, <laughs> give me medium medium coverage, radiant finish, yes. So the only concern I have is like, did I get the right color? Because they leaned so rosy pink. Neutral looked pink and so I went warm. So we'll see. It might be a case of all the really fair shades still being too saturated for fair skin tones. The Gucci suffers from that, the Guerlain suffers from that, the House Lab suffers from that, where it's just like you get into the pale shades and they're like these pastel like 
Easter colors. They're not real skin tones. And so they don't look right on anyone. And I'm really hoping that's not the case here. But yeah, when I did get this, I was just like, okay, I'm gonna go for like the fairest warm one because I know, I know the rosy one is gonna be like way too pink. A little update if you don't follow me on Instagram or you didn't see my stories yesterday, but I got the package from Harrods and they had refunded my foundation because they ran out before they could fulfill my order and it isn't on sale in the US yet. So I will be filming the first impressions of the other stuff and then we will then follow up when I get the foundation, but it is apparently in very high demand. So I'm trying to get my hands on it as quickly as I can, but I was so disappointed yesterday. I was so disappointed. We shall see. If nothing else, I can color correct. We can just try. Oh, this is another one. When does this come out? This is the new Stretch Fluid Foundation from Glossier. So 89% skincare base, a moisture, I hope it's not like actives, but yeah, skincare with Glossier usually just means it's nice. <laughs> it's hydrating. You know what I mean? It doesn't have color to it. It doesn't mean that it's got like five types of acids in it or something. Moisturizing gel cream emulsion featuring plant-derived squalene and glycerin. I love glycerin. To moisturize and nourish the skin's moisture barrier in 32 shades. We love to see it from Glossier. They finally are putting their money where it should have been in terms of shade ranges. Across the seven shade categories and five undertone groups, $34. Stretch Balm Concealer has expanded its range to 32 foundation matching shades. So I thought that this was a new concealer. This is a new foundation. I'm clearly confused. So yeah, I will be buying the new foundation. I will definitely try that for y'all. Oh, confirmed. Pat McGrath is coming to Ulta. Woohoo! I don't know. All right, so we have the new Lipwear Pro LED device from Dr. Dennis Gross. I am a device girly. I love me a device. Yes, I do. What is it supposed to do? A red LED lights lip device that fights visible signs of aging, including fine lines, wrinkles, and creases around the lips. Support circulation for enhanced natural color and vis... Enhanced natural color. That sounds like a flaw that they're trying to disguise as a feature. <laughs> Enhanced natural color, it's gonna inflame your lips ever so much. And visibly fuller, more defined lips over time. Multiple wavelengths support natural collagen production to visibly reduce fine lines and wrinkles while smoothing skin around, around and on the lips. $148, sign me up. <laughs> Sign me up, Dr. Dennis Gross. Yes, I will probably get that because your girl loves an LED device, okay? I work with Current Body on their LED devices. I have the Dr. Dennis Gross mask. I love a new face. That's not LED. That's I just love a device. I love an anti-aging device, okay? And I will probably try this and review it for y'all. I mean, even if you don't want me to, I'm probably still going to. I have a lot of money invested in this area of my face. So let's, let's freaking go. Half Magic is coming to Ulta. Well, maybe that's an excuse to finally freaking try them. Y'all are always asking for Half Magic, Moira. It's like the ones that Lauren May loves. And no one has actually asked me to do Yenza, but I am still intrigued by Yenza because it's like Lauren's favorite foundation and she always looks like a goddess. So these are things that are on my list. But yeah, that's awesome. That means I can actually go and like try them. Okay, I'm not completely losing my mind. Okay, because there are other Tom Ford quads that have come out recently. It wasn't just a summer release and now we're getting a fall release. So now we have available now in Europe the Runway Eyes Color Quad in Dark Opulence and Ambrosia. Shade and Illuminate radi Radiance Enhancer Color Corrector Light Medium Deep. Okay, so he's put out a color corrector. It's a really beautiful color story. It's not really for me, but it is pretty. Again, I don't really love his formulas. And the Cafe Rose Eau de Parfum. How many parfums does this guy have? My goodness gracious. I guess there are people out there just like anybody else who, you know, collects Tom Ford releases. That's an expensive habit, my friends. What in the heck is that? Makeup Forever. These compacts look so much like NARS. It looks like a, like a knockoff. Makeup Forever Artist Longwear Skin Fusing Powder Blush, $32. So NARS priced as well. After watching Tom, my good friend, my bestie, Hope Mess Tom, over on their channel, just do this deep dive review or attempted deep dive, dive review on Makeup Forever and watching how underwhelmed they were with everything. I just don't think that Makeup Forever is like my next big like brand that I'm going to start again, like me deep diving into because it just, uh, Tom and I agree on a lot of things and there was just not a lot that excited them. But they are replaceable pans because it's such like a makeup artist or 
tinted brand and blah, blah, blah. Very cool, not for me. Oh goodness, we have the Be Goldy Bright Drops. They are trying to capitalize, them being Drunk Elephant, are trying to capitalize, and pardon my cynicism, but you know, the Debronzy Drops have really gone quite viral over on TikTok and people are just now discovering them, which I think is funny. I think that it's funny that TikTok is just now discovering anything, but I guess it's because everyone's 17. They were like just born when this stuff was popular for the first time. So that's an exaggeration, but like not by that much. But you know what, y'all? I am just not really here for the DeBronzy drops. Like I had a whole thing of them. I like them enough, but they're so easy to overdo. And as far as someone who is now over 35, I would highly, 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 always, 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 recommend, you know, especially for aging skin, if you need plumping and if you need like a, a true skincare oriented primer that doesn't interfere with your makeup, but it's just going to make your skin look well, gosh darn better. The Cell Rejuvenating Priming Moisturizer in Golden from Victoria Beckham Beauty. I know it's like twice the price. I know that, but I think that it's way better than the DeBronzy Drops, but the Be Goldie Bright Drops, now they have the Be Goldie, the O Blues, and the Deep Bronzy. So the O Blues is a rosy flush. The Be Goldy is a golden luminosity and the Deep Bronzy is the bronzy glow. I might swatch it in store at Sephora. I'm not gonna like buy a whole thing of it just to try it. It looks really pretty, it does. The thing with the Deep Bronzy drops is like you couldn't really wear them by themselves. They really are only like a mix in for something and this does look, and I mean, you might be able to. I found that it like dried up on my face and was just like kind of freaky. It just like didn't work. Yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe they're cool but like I have this. I have the LeBron, LeBron, the LeBron James. I have the LeBlanc Rosy Light Drops from Chanel and you'll buy them from my cold dead hands, okay? That and Drage, the stick highlight from Chanel. I really am confident in saying that I have never tried anything that does this that does a better job of it. And I've tried a lot of them, so like, if it's as good, it's as good, but like it's probably not. Naruto by ColourPop, because ColourPop cannot help their insatiable hunger for an IP collab. Why Naruto? Now, I have nothing against Naruto. The only thing I really know about Naruto is the running thing where they put their arms back. And that was how my kid ran for a long time. I would call it his Naruto run, but it's a, it's a fine, that's a, it's, it exists. And you make a Princess Mononoke collection? All right, we will talk ColourPop. Maybe. Mm. I'd rather them collab with someone else. <laughs> My folks over at Thrive Cosmetics have released a liquid eyeliner I had no idea about until it got advertised to me. I don't even have the mascara yet. I literally emailed them yesterday. I was like, hi. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> I don't know. I think that they had some kind of like email consolidation and like all of my emails were bouncing back or something. I'm not sure, but hopefully I'll be able to try all this stuff for real at some point soon. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to be that girl who's like, where's my free stuff? Send me my free makeup. You know what I mean? But like they are old buddies. So, you know, I can literally just text Carissa and just be like, where's my mascara? <laughs> uh oh, the talk of the town the new Sunlit Seduction from Pat McGrath. I have been seeing some really funny info, not infographics, but just like memes. You know, someone has combined all of the past releases from Pat McGrath and it's like, spot the new eyeshadow belt. <laughs> spot the new mothership <laughs> because they're all so similar. And Nicolette made a really good point. She was like, why is this not divine, a Divine Rose release? Like Divine Rose, what would it be at this point? Like 12? No, because this is only Mothership 11. It'd be like Divine Rose 3 or 4 or something. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not like that big of a devotee to the Pat McGrath brand. And this doesn't have any special shades in it is my understanding. So like, why? It's really giving Patrick Ta. It's just giving Patrick Ta. And like, if you're excited about that, that's, you know, they make these things because they sell and I think that probably someone will like it, but like it does not entice me whatsoever, especially to spend $128 on it. They bumped that price up, didn't they? Didn't they? No, I do not need it. I also don't need the new fall Shantikai collection, even though I know that I'm going to have like Natalie banging down my door being like, you do need the new Shantikai collection, but she gets it in PR, okay? I just don't wanna spend my money on it because like I've been burned so much in the past by Shantikai. Like I already know that those eyeshadow singles are fine. I don't think they're exquisite. They're fine. They don't really thrill me. They don't have a ton of grip. They don't have a lot of unctuous kind of like creaminess to them, even though, you know, it's a powder, but still it's not giving hourglass scattered light. It's not giving anything that like grips onto the eyes in any sort of like, you know, magical way. It's not, you know, lid luster from uh, Victoria Beckham. And it's like twice the price of a lid luster. 
Dexter, you know? I mean, not really, but close. Good Lord, I would never in my life pay $56 for a single matte eyeshadow. I don't care if it was imbued with, well, if it was imbued with the power that the patriarchy holds, maybe, but I'm done being burned by Chantecar releases. That's all I got to say. All right, Gisu, what in the what? One of my viewers sent this to me and said like, oh, so Gisu is putting out some like sparkly Velveeta because that's what this looks like. It is the golden shimmer glow. They really only have one trick. Gisu has one trick and it is a wobbly bottle with gold sparkly stuff inside. The shimmer version of the original honey infused body oil, fast absorbing, 98% natural formulation combines Mirsalehi, Mirsalehi honey and Mirsalehi oil blend to help intensely hydrate the skin, leaving a shimmering finish that adds instant glamour to the skin. Ah, uh, uh, I, you know, I, does it, what does it smell like? Like, that's my question because they love to say that it's infused with honey and then it smells like old fry oil. Yeah, I remain to be convinced and honestly, they don't really deserve another chance from me because Gisu just disappointed me so much with those lip oils and they really only have one trick. Do something else. Ooh, what is that? Available now, Beach Sticks. A sun-kissed summer glow inspired by Charlotte's favorite Ibizan be beaches. Try saying that five times fast. Ibiza and beaches. Wear on your cheeks and lips for an instant sun-kissed summer radiance. $39 each. I swear to God, Sharon Tilbury, you charge $10 more per product than you should. Okay, $39 for that. $39 for a blush stick. It's just a blush stick, fam. It's 40 freaking dollars for a blush stick. And it's in like merit packaging. I don't get it. Like how did, who gave her the right to charge what she charges for what it is that she's, I'm sure that they're great, but I just don't think they're $40. You know what I mean? I don't mind paying for luxury, but I don't get luxury in my hands when I have a Charlotte Tilbury product in my hands. That's why they're so easy to dupe from e.l.f. <laughs> Anyway, Trixie Cosmetics really said, here are some bronzers. These are really beautiful. I don't think I'm gonna buy them just because Trixie Cosmetics is so intensely pigmented. I just don't, I, it's probably not really like what I'm looking for, but I will say he gets me on the color theory here because that lightest, what do you want from me software update? Leave me alone. That lightest one sun kissed is so, so ultra gorgeous. It looks a lot like Mo from Thrive. It looks a lot like the very fair, the fair bronze from Say and and I don't know, I mean, I kind of like a good stiff, highly pigmented formula in a bronzer, a cream bronzer, because then you put less on, you know? I don't know, maybe it's worth it. I mean, they're $16, like, they're cute. Should we do that? Maybe. Cause it's usually, I'm like, oh no, it's drag makeup. I don't want a blue eyeshadow palette kind of thing. But like this is bronzer, I mean, they look really nice. <laughs> Maybe it's a little sneaky sleeper hit, you know? Fleur has sent me one PR package and I just don't know if they're gonna send me another one. I smelled the empty container of father figure in Sephora and I was like, yes. Not only did I like the way that it smelled, but also father figure, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. I love their names. Missing person, so clever. I don't like the way missing person smells, but father figure, that's hilarious. <laughs> Cause you know, it's gonna smell kind of like, you know, androgynous or masculine or whatever, but it's like, a, you know, it's, it's a perfume. Father figure, flair, it's funny. And I like that, that's funny. I don't know, I might reach out to them and be like, hi, can I have that please? Just message them on Instagram. Let's see what they say. Worst they can say is no. Moving right along. Oh, here we go. I don't know about y'all. I've never in my life gotten excited about a Sephora gift set. Maybe it's just because I already have so much stuff, but like even before I had so much stuff. I hate minis. I loathe minis. I know that there are people who are like, I bought it in a mini because I know I'm not gonna work my way all the way through it, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't want a mini. I don't know why. I just don't want to interact with something tiny. I just don't want to, okay? And also, it's always kind of that grab bag gimmick of like, I might like 60% of it. And the rest of it's just gonna rattle around somewhere. Maybe if you do the Tati thing and break them apart and you know, give them as gifts or whatever, but still, the odds that like, everybody's gonna get what they want, it's so low. Now, Dr. Jar, like when they're individual branded sets, like Dr. Jark put one out last holiday that was like a wildly good deal, yes. But when it's like, 
you know, 10 lipsticks and a lip liner. I'm just like, no, what is that? Tarte always lasts to cool. They have released Key Largo Glow, which is glow boosting drops, serum infused glow boosting drops mixed with moisturizer, primer, foundation for a nourishing glow on face and body. It, everybody's capitalizing on the deep bronzy drops. Everybody's trying to get in on the popularity of the deep bronzy drops. And the fact that like you're going to do this and you're going to come out with one shade, no. Now, speaking of things that used to come in one shade, Hourglass. I think I'm gonna go buy the Veil powder just because now there are new shades and I love this powder. It's such a good powder. It's like the only powder in a really long time that I've actually finished. It was in my empties and I think I'm gonna buy another one. I have recently, I know, I've been watching a little bit of TikTok because I realize that it's kind of required reading, you know, required exposure to content for me to like understand what's going on in beauty because YouTube is not quite as much the cutting edge anymore and TikTok is. And so it's like, I need to understand what's trending over there. And what's trending is Hourglass. They have Hailey Bieber, and Sophia Ritchie in a chokehold, like in a long-term commitment where they are posting at least one TikTok, I don't know, every couple of weeks or something that's just Hourglass products. And it's like, okay, well, Hourglass is really trying to get back on the map. I have loved their formulas in the past. We've all had hangups about their limited shade ranges and they appear to be trying to put in the work and they are going virally sensational over there on TikTok. And a lot of brands that have had had sort of besmirched pasts a little bit are trying to make a comeback on TikTok because the audience is younger where people don't know about what they've done. So like nude sticks just full on hired Sophia Ritchie to be their creative director after pretty problematic behavior. Yeah, it's, it's a hard thing sometimes when you have been kind of a, a student of this for a long time, it's a hard thing to swallow that like the trends are trending and the brands are coming back and they're managing to redeem themselves by, you know, pumping makeup into a younger generation that doesn't know the context. So I, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. I know, but I just thought that I would say it because it's like, you know, you kind of have to like chronicle these things, right? But Hourglass is making a comeback and their products are beautiful. Melt Makeup, a brand that has impressed me in some ways and very much disappointed me in others, but that's just because like their stuff doesn't necessarily always appeal to my personal taste. I do not like their eyeshadow palettes. I find them really difficult to work with and I find them to be very like tonally one note when you get them. It's like, you know, they'll be all kind of a medium value. You know, it's really hard to work with for me, but their cream blush lights stole my heart. I bought all of them and I think that they're fantastic. The shades never really expanded in the right direction for me, but I still love them. And this is the new Glazed Skin Sheer Finishing Powder, an all natural, lightweight, buildable coverage, soft focus finish, blurs pores, fine lines, and wrinkles, giving a radiant glow for more youthful, fresh looking skin. Multi use powder that can be on top of foundation or worn alone. So it could be a powder foundation. It has mineral clay that balances oil and it moisturizes with jojoba oil and vitamin E6 shades, e, vitamin E6 shades, no punctuation, Sophie, $39 each. Um, I'm a little confused. I'm just a little confused. I really want to see this on skin. The fact that all it is is product packaging in the pictures is really frustrating because I mean, sure, the product packaging is pretty and everything, but you've really confused me with glazed powder. We got powdered donuts and we got glazed donuts. Those are not the same thing. And I don't think that there's anyone who would try and argue with you to tell you that they are the same thing, okay? And so, yeah, the fact that they're like pouring some kind of like corn syrup all over these packages is still not telling me that this powder is going to make my skin look glazed. I'm just a little confused. So I don't know. Last I checked, there's been no new technology introduced that makes powder not powder. So I will be awaiting an update there if one ever comes your move melt cosmetics. <laughs> I am annoyed. I'm kind of annoyed by this House Labs Try Before You Buy kit. So this is making it easy for us to shop our favorite foundation online. Yes, I understand shopping online is challenging, but they should not have made a foundation this challenging to shade match in the first place. It is the one that like glows in my mind as like the line that people with fair skin cannot find their undertone in. And I'm not here trying to like die on the hill of like fair skin people are uncatered to in the makeup industry. <laughs> like, <laughs> No, but you know, people 
want to like things from House Labs. House Labs is a cool brand. Lady Gaga is a cool person. You start to feel like it's your fault if you can't find a shade match or find something that you like about this foundation. It's just not a good foundation. Like, stop trying to repackage it in ways where it's like, oh, okay, well, maybe if you buy three small ones, your skin will suddenly turn pastel pink, pastel yellow, or pastel peach. It won't. Those aren't skin tones for humans. Those are Easter egg colors. And so like, there's no repackaging solution here that's going to change the fact that this is just not a good foundation release, at least not for fair skin tones. So I don't like it. And, and the fact that it's like you only pay for it if you don't end up buying a full size. So if it sucks, it still costs you $12 plus tax and your shipping or whatever past the trial period. I get what they're trying to do, but this is a solution that should not need to exist. The reason that it seems so confangled, right? It just seems very like tedious and arduous of a solution is because you're putting a band-aid on something that should have been solved from the root. And that is that the shades don't match people. It's impossible to get shade matched. It's not because you're picking the wrong one. So you heard it from the opinionated color theory horse's mouth. <laughs> Nilly is still out here and they're making skincare. They have a foaming cleanser and makeup remover. Okay, a gentle cleanser cushions skin in clouds of foam is fragrance-free, pH balance, removes makeup, mineral SPF, and pollution without stripping skin for a healthy skin barrier, replenishes hydration that's lost during cleansing. Um, yeah. Okay. These Nabla, 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 Italian brand, these Nabla singles. I'm Italian, but I'm also from the South. Nabla. They're really cool the way that they're selling them in singles in these, I think that the sides are magnetic, which is really clever. So it's like clear all the way through. It looks really cool. It's just like a cool package to interact with. Wish I liked that Nabla eyeshadow formula. I really wish I liked it, but I don't. I have the side-by-side -side palette and it just, I mean, nothing stuck around. It drove me crazy. It was like, it disappeared before I was done with the rest of my makeup. V disappointing. We finally have all of the shades in this Valentino blush release. So this is a blush and lip, basically. It says the new Liqui Rosso two in one soft matte liquid lipstick and blush. Runway inspired liquid matte color for lips and cheeks is layerable for a natural makeup or intense color impact. Lightweight buildable gives subtle color and glow. So does that mean that it's got shimmer? Doesn't look like it has shimmer. Doesn't look shimmery at all. What are you talking about? Maybe a little bit. Ooh, those are pretty. 12 shades, 40 doll hairs each. I am intrigued. I'm intrigued by these because I do like a matte liquid blush. I do. And hopefully they would be better than the NARS ones that were not matte, but they just didn't, didn't stick around. You know what I mean? And this looks so much more committed on the skin. I don't know where these are. Oh, these are at Sephora. They'll be available online. They're already there. July 25th at Sephora. Maybe I'll buy one. What do you think? Those th I think they look kind of neat. I don't want to wear them on my lips, but I think that they'd make cool blushes or maybe they're terrible. And again, we'd find out on our own, wouldn't we? It would just be fun to know. It'd just be fun to know. But also Valentino has this heinous habit of putting a really ridiculously strong fragrance in everything, including their freaking eye glitters. You know what I mean? Like everything that they do is so wildly fragranced. I doubt this is any different, but I'm not going to put it on my mouth. So, I mean, I would for the video, but probably not long term. Either way, let me know. I think that they look interesting. Kevin Aquan spells his name like me. Rest in peace. The lighting stick. So new lighting stick brightens and highlights face with a creamy formula for a glass-like glow, luminous and sheer with buildable coverage, mirror-like pigments to catch and reflect light. I, this is another case of, I have tried so many dud versions of that kind of formula. I'm holding this up because I've tried so many dud versions of this kind of formula. And the Chanel Drage stick, game changer. Just stole my whole heart in person in the Chanel Beauté Atelier in New York City and I never looked back and I just have trouble, like it's not something that I go for anyway and I just have trouble really wanting to pull out my old pocketbook and trade money for another one to see if I can beat that one because it's just so good. If it was something that's like, oh, I know that I'll make my way all the way through it and I just, you know, I collect them or whatever, it's like, you know, different foundations and stuff like that. Like, you know, I'm always willing to try those, but like, I'm not even a highlighter girly. This thing changed my life, you know what I mean? And so I just, I'm not, I'm not out here trying to start my new career at being like a highlighter stick girly. 
I think I'm in the minority for like not finding these new Chanel blushes particularly appealing looking. Like one is kind of purple and pink and one is kind of like copper and beige. They're pretty and the lipsticks are pretty and that nail polish is pretty. I would wear that nail polish. Actually, both of those nail polishes, but I don't really wear nail polish. I get mine done. But yeah, I, the, the little loose powders with the little sponge tip guy in there and stuff, like it just, maybe I'll go try them in person and I'll have a change of heart, but like that is not a run, do not walk situation for me personally. Oh, this will be the last thing that I talk about because I have been interested in it every time that I have seen it from someone else. And that is the new mini eyeshadow palette, the mini starlet palette from Natasha Denona. I've seen Kelly talk about it. I've seen Tom talk about it. I've seen Hannah talk about it. I think that this is so pretty. And in like my ballerina core days, like when I say that, I'm like I have them lately. You know, I just decide that I'm going to be Ariana Grande that day and I'm just gonna have like a ballerina core day and I'm just gonna like, you know, wear scrunchy socks and just be a ballerina that day. It, this is the beauty of working from home. And this is that mood. I was so tempted by this, even though I don't like Natasha Denona's matte eyeshadow formula and there are three mattes in here. And everybody talked about how Galaxia is like this amazing shade and it's in other palettes and that they included it in this is just really cool and remarkable and whatever. And then I thought about my cut trios and I was like I would get so much more use out of pulling out my Kaja trios to try and achieve a look that I, any look that I could get with this. And my Kaja ones give me more options in terms of a little bit of warmth because this is so cool toned. Like there's no relief from the cool tonedness of it and no relief from the desaturatedness of it. It's beautiful in theory, but it's just not where I'm at right now. Like today I am wearing the About Face Beauty liquid I paint in Capulets. And then I did want to give another like fair shake to the Rare Beauty, the shimmery eyeshadow sticks, again in growth. That's what, yeah. Absolutely beautiful on a swatch, totally underwhelming on my eyes, but nonetheless, I did end up with something that is really, really beautiful. Not shimmery, but really beautiful. And it's just warm. I'm just into like these really pretty bronzy, like close to my skin tone, warm tones right now. And like this time last year, it was all about cool stuff. So I will come back around, but that does not interest me right now because it's just not going to make its way into rotation, especially enough to like compensate for the fact that I don't totally love that formula. And a Kaja Trio is, you know, the same price-ish and I already have so many of them and they have all those really lovely, like, you know, chunky textures to them and everything. And again, for the purposes of a review, you don't need my review on a mini palette from Natasha Denona. That's not news, you know what I mean? That's not like a new product, so. Anyway, I think that works us back to where we left off the last time. I will put a playlist of my other tepid takes right schmear for you, and I hope that you enjoyed this one. If you did, please do give the video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. I've also heard that cool people subscribe to my channel. It's just ugh, word on the street. So like, if you're cool, you should probably subscribe if you're cool. It would be cool if you did. And I wanna thank y'all for watching. I love you so very, very much. And I'll see you in the next one, bye.